So we're sitting here with my friend Zach and talking about modal vamps and emixolydian and getting yourself to hear it clearly. And we just talked about just really making sure that the tonic is in your ear because otherwise you're going to flip yourself over to A major. Because the notes of the A major scale and the notes of the E mixolydian scale are the same notes. But And how do we get this very familiar thing to sound as mixolydian? And one of my favorite things sounds a little bit out of tune. That's it. There it is. Um, is how do you get it to really sit and sound um, as E mixolydian to your ear? So one one really good thing to do is just to keep playing with the drone. And one of the reasons I select this key, this tonic, is to have E. And it's the longer that you spend there with the with the drone and the tonic, giving you that support and reminding where you are that you're you're not going home. There, oh, I did it. Now we flipped it over, and your, you know, you, your ear might have gone to, oh, that's home. But we're not there. We're just. And it might take a while because it might be unfamiliar to you, and that's okay. So just keep playing with that open E drone. Keep going back to the tonic in your playing, in your improvisation. And just taking little trips away from the tonic. Um, in Indian music, the first section of the song or the performance is often laying out the scale or the mode or the rag. They call it one note at a time. way too fast but and then it'll help settle your ear by um, really relying on the chord tones and resolving to the chord tones of uh, of E major um, as we're talking about E mixolydian and um, maybe even E7 man this guitar is losing me off Let's see what's going on here I think it's time for new strings. Okay. And in fact, because you're talking about emixolydian, um, you can think about uh, an E7 chord and the tones of that, which are going to be the E, G sharp, B, D, E. Um, and finding them. But for right now, I want to talk about the triad and working on... Um, your triad arpeggios. Um, and the way that I would start you out to start working on learning your major triad arpeggios up and down the neck is first thing to do is to learn to visualize the caged sequence. If you haven't, um, if you haven't checked that out already, it's basically that the, because of the way the guitar is tuned, we have certain shapes in open position that the, the shapes themselves don't have anything to do with the music. They just have to do with what they look like on the fretboard because the instrument is tuned that way. And the only open, open major chords there are are C and then G and then D and then A and then E. And what's fun with that is I just played the chords to Hey Joe by um, Tim Rose, as you know it by uh, Jimi Hendrix, but C, G, D, A, E. And everything else, like if you want to play a B flat chord, well, that's like taking an A chord and moving it up one fret and using the bar. 
or if you want to play an F chord, that's like playing an E shape and moving it up one fret. So all of the major shapes up and down the neck are derived from these names. And that's a useful construct, both for chords and scales. So <clears throat> for example, and, and this is the key of the cage sequence is that as you invert a chord up the neck, it goes in the order of the letters in the word caged. So, oh, first we have the C shape, then we have the A shape, then we have the G shape, right? The G shape, then the E shape, and then the D shape. Um, I think what I want to do real quickly, because this cage sequence stuff is really important, um, I'm going to do this with this acoustic guitar right here because capos and electric guitars often don't play nice and I want to go do this fast. Um, so if you're having trouble visualizing how the cage sequence works together, I would recommend using a capo and say, okay, look, here's my C shape. Well, I'm going to now move the capo to where my fingers are the highest up the fretboard, right? And so I'm going to put the capo there right there at the third fret where the highest notes on that C chord I just played were. And then I'm going to think, okay, caged. Well, the next letter after C in the word cage is A. So I'm going to, with that capo now at the third fret, oh, there's a higher version of my C, C chord, but I'm holding it like an A shape, right? And then, okay, the highest fingers up the fretboard are at the fifth fret now. So I'm going to move my capo to the fifth fret. And I'll make a G shape. Still hearing C sounds, but at the at the fifth fret, a higher inversion. Again, go up to where the highest fingers up the network at the, up the neck were at the eighth fret. Make an E shape. And in real life, in real guitar playing, I don't think there's any circumstance in which I would actually put a capo at the tenth fret, but I suppose maybe. And, but there, if I make a D shape, I still hear a C chord through all of that. So just a little bit of talking about the cage sequence. So now we can get back to our E major arpeggios and you can do them and or soon we'll be able to do them. Um, so <clears throat> in any key by moving them through the, uh, through the cage sequence. E is a little bit tricky in open position, but not too bad. We have to add one note. So the open E string. So I'm going to play zero. I'm going to go back to the electric guitar. It's just a little easier to see. Hold on one second. A little more contrast, I think. Yeah. So um, open four, two, two, one, open, open. And um, one thing that I would encourage you to look at here is the, we have this major triad and it goes root, third, fifth. And as you take that triad, so if you start on the lowest note on the root, you play root, third, fifth, and then you can do what we call inverting it, which is to play the lowest note on the third. It's called first inversion of the triad, and then you can invert it again, second inversion with the fifth in the bass. So root position, first inversion, second inversion. One more time, root position. Root third fifth, third fifth root, fifth root third, right? And then when you invert it one more time, you get back to third fifth. So that's what we're gonna be doing a lot of with learning your E major arpeggios here. You can apply to any key. And I want to just show you that in open position with our cage sequence and our tuning of the, of the guitar, you can play, it's good to look at, oh, hey, look, I've got six strings, so I'm going to have an inversion repeat twice. If I go six string, 
sixth string, fifth string, fourth string, and then third string, second string, first string. And just because I'm in open position, I'm going to go ahead and add that open E string. And so that's how I personally finger this particular arpeggio is I start with the open E string and then fourth fret, second fret, second fret. Oh, wait, sometimes I do this. Watch this. Open for one. Now I'm going to put my first finger, that is, second finger. It just allows me to smoothly move through the um, register there. While I'm here, oh, hey, was it, this is E, e position or E, the E shape for, for the cage sequence. Let me get a little more in the video middle there. Yeah. So. This I'm going to work on the next position, this D shape on the neck. So I'll start. I can still include the open E string in there because it's guitar and it's fun to do so. Root third, fifth, root third, fifth, root third. Like so. And now, oh, I, I just switched it up. I went to, oh, look, in E, what's the next shape after D? The next shape's going to be a C shape. So let me do it a little slower. Third, fifth, root, third, fifth, root. Sorry, slipping around there. Fifth. That's my C position, C shape. Then I'm going to go to my A shape because it's the A is the next letter in cage. This one's a little bit tricky. You may have a hard time visually visualizing it at first. Sorry, it's a little rattling. There's a few different ways to do this one, but there's fifth root third fifth. If you want to have fun, you can reach all the way up there to the roof. You could bar your fourth finger across there, or if you wanted to, you could hop up with some couple of fingers. I don't really do that, apparently. I do it with the bar, but... um, And then... So this was A shape. We have our E shape next. Whoops. How do I actually do that? I think I use the bar. Oh yeah, I'm using fourth finger, root, third finger, first finger, oh, bar across those three strings. Now I'll bar with the pinky finger at the 12th fret. That's my G form. And finally, oh, I'm back to this E form. Root, third, fifth, root, third, fifth, root. So I've thrown a bunch of stuff at you because we're making videos, so you have the advantage of being able to go back to it. Yep. But the th one the principle that I actually find easiest, okay, so the cage. Understanding the cage sequ sequence is really, really important because it, it's going to help you organize the fretboard and move between these positions on the fretboard and all that stuff. But in terms of how triads work and how I in, in, visualize them or audialize them on the neck, I like to think about these shapes and they're easier to remember. Well, I don't know for me, but I think this is a nice contrast to the cage sequence, which is this. A triad is just three notes. It's the root and the third, the root, the third, and the fifth. Wait, the root, the third, yeah. and the fifth. Okay, fine. So, and I was saying earlier, oh, 
There's my third, fifth root. It's a first inversion triad on the lowest three string. And then, oh look, there is a second inversion E major triad. It looks kind of like an E shape in our the yep. way that we align our fingers. And then here's another second inversion E major triad. So, oh, it looked like kind of a little E shape here and a little D shape here. And I'm hearing the same song, right? Same little melody. And then I'll go up here. Oh, look, that looks like a little G shape or it also looks like a C shape, right? Oh, look at that. So I'm playing four, fourth finger, third finger, first finger, and this is how I do this. There are other ways to do it. Second finger, third finger, first finger. And as you go through these positions, so you can just see there's that, there's that root position and there's that root position of inversion again, it helps you reinforces this knowledge in these places on the neck and then you're back where you started. Uh, thir first inversion. First inversion. And on and on like that. One other thing I wanted to say about this while we're on this topic. Oh, is take one of these. I'm going to take uh, this one because it's root position and play the first three notes. Let me see if I can get both hands in here a little bit. Yep. Play the first three notes and then play start on the second note. Play three notes and then third, third note. I clearly need to get a more comfortable chair for these video lessons, I think. reminds me of the sound of a trumpet like Louis Armstrong or something because a, a trumpet when you in one valve position will play you an overtone chord just like this a triad and so on and so forth and I would check that out with each each one of these positions oh time don't you know you want to actually be mentally present when you're doing it so take your time and and think to yourself even oh there's the root oh that's the third that's the fifth it's great to do it in just little little pieces spend five minutes working on that and then go play some zeppelin or whatever it is you want to play and then come back to it and play some more of that all right questions nope that was a lot I know. Yeah, I, that's why I didn't want to say anything to. I was letting you go, and I was going to rewatch everything pretty much <laughs> to reinforce it. So I think what we can do too is um, let me see. I can hopefully make some tab limiter. Hold on. Okay, so here are these kind of I call them satchmo patterns because I said it sounds like a trumpet, and um, but these are in C. I did this for another another lesson, but you can you can import this to how you were playing before. So this starts with a C major chord and this, okay, here, that's a second inversion because the root is in the middle. That's the fifth, that's the root, the, the third, then the root, then the third, then the fifth, then the third, then the fifth, then the root, and then the fifth, then the root, then the third. Just go up and come back down. It sounds very trumpety to my ear. And then this moves up to the next position, yeah? C, wait, where's the A form? Well, it's kind of, uh, it's there, right? When we start lower, we've got a little bit of that A, G form, cage form there. And then as we move up to the higher portions of the neck, you'll notice that when I was playing these before, as I moved to the higher strings, my hand moved down the fretboard towards the nut. So you come up, 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 down, 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 down. 
up, 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 up. All these are the same. So I just wanted you to have a little tab of that, and I figured while we're at it, we'd share it on the video too. Okay. Okay. So you were asking about, we were talking about how on guitar, when you're moving from a chord to chord, if we're staying in the key of E for a, a minute or something, there's your E chord. Let's just do one, four, five in E major, right? So, okay, there's E and there's A and there's E and there's B, right? And how do you start to think about voice leading these chords? Okay, and what songs can you use to voice lead them? A while back, probably I think on your like first lesson, we talked about like the ping pong cadence, right? And yeah. you said a minute, yeah, you said a minute ago, like easy progressions, right? So ping pong cadence or moving, going from the one chord, right? So going from your one chord to your four chord, to your one chord, to your five chord, right? That's the, the most basic progression because you only have one type of movement. You're starting on the E and then you're going up a fifth to B. Oops, sorry, you go down a fifth first. I was trying to play Mixolydian there for a second, apparently. So I really need to get my chair together in here. Okay, hold on. Yep, there's my A. And then back up a fifth. And then up a fifth to B. Right? And you may ask, why am I talking about, why am I doing this this way? Why aren't, why aren't I going down a fourth to B from E? And the reason I'm doing this is just in terms of simplifying the nomenclature. That's really all it is. Um, and that it helps you understand what we're going to talk about next, which is the voice leading. If you start getting confused with the bass movement by fourths, it's going to um, make it harder to learn this, which is that in good voice leading, which the idea of voice leading is to make the voices of each chord move in stepwise motion or cl as close to it as possible to the next note in the next chord. It makes it more singable and uh, singable is the very definition of melodic and what we are looking for is the most singable or most melodic pathway from one chord to another for each voice in the chord. So <clears throat> hence the term voice leading and um, so <clears throat> see where I, oh that's and what we talk about in voice leading is that is different types of movement. You're going to have movement of the base of the root of the chord moving by fifths, which we're doing right now, or by step, so it's by scale step, or by third. And, you, and with each either case, you can have a fifth up and down, or you can move the base by a step up or down, or you can move the base by a third up or down. And that covers those, that's all the movements there are. You can do an octave displacement of any of these things. So instead of moving a fifth down, you move a fourth up and that's fine, but harmonically there's no difference. And why you need to understand that the movements are by fifth, by step or second and by, or by third is that in every case, the voice leading is going to move in opposition to or in contrary motion to the movement of the bass. So if the bass is moving down a fifth, Whatever voices are moving as we move from chord to chord are going to move in the opposite direction. So if the bass goes down a fifth, the other two voices are going to move up. Right? I'm going to show you that. Yeah, I was going to say, can you show me real quick? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm getting there. I just wanted to kind of lay out the terminology. Okay. But, so um, let's see here. I'm just going to try something real quick with the zoomness. Bloop. Maybe a little bit bigger for the video. Okay, so, okay, let's see. Yeah. Um, so going from E to A, I'm going down a fifth in the bass. And oh, hey, look, there is my second inversion E chord, right? Uh, fifth, root third. To go to A, the best voice leading, 
what happens is the root of the chord that you're on remains the same and the other two voices move up so this note is staying there and then the other two voices move around it And so something to do in many different ways is there's your E, we're going down a fifth to A, and then coming back to E. As I go down a fifth in the bass, No, you're good. I'm, li I'm just listening right now, too. No, that's cool. Um, is that one voice is staying the same, that high E string, and the other two voices are moving. Right? Bass is moving down a fifth to A. Voices are moving in opposition. As we come back up a fifth to E, they move down. So, um, the, and I'll just, I'm going to go through the other ways of movement for a second. So if I'm here again in the key of E, because we're guitar players and we love that key of E. Oh, if I go down a third, I'm going to go from E in the key of E to C sharp minor, right? And if I just look at three of the notes in that chord, again, I'm going to start with my second inversion E chord and I add my fourth finger right there to put the C sharp only one voice is moving like so at the same time if we had a bass in there oh the movement between the chords is very smooth and part of the function of the voice leading is it so that you can hear the individual voices and that helps develop your harmonic your your ear for harmony your ear of um understanding what is happening whoa melodically while the chords are changing apparently it's that time of day where everything gets yellow hold on no, it's funny enough. I'm actually starting to listen now too, and I can hear the different changes between them. How it goes from like bum to ba, like you can hear yeah. it between. We'd like be able, to, depending so, on if you sound like in a chord progression or anything like lower, a little drumier, or if you want to sound more pitchier, higher pitchier, you know. Yeah, and the it's really good to sing the individual voices of the chord progression. So we have done up and down a fifth. We've done up and or oh, I didn't do uh, up a third. So this was down a third. And if I'm going up a major, up a third in from E, I'm going to go to the G sharp in the key of E. Uh, it's going to be a G sharp minor there. And again, as you move by thirds, one voice moves and it moves in opposition. So if I just look at the three notes of the triad. minor e just one voice is moving and i'm moving up in a third as i move from e to g sharp minor as i move the root the bass up the e goes down so again in opposition to the bass right so we had up and down fifths up and down thirds and the only other form of movement is up and down by seconds so if i move from E to F sharp minor, right? How am I going to create that move? Well, I could do it, and it you will hear this in parallel motion all the time, and it sounds good. But it's hard to hear the separation between the voices because everybody's moving in the same direction. It just sounds like a chunk and then another chunk. But if I move in contrary motion and I play a really 
really set myself up here. I'm gonna do this there. Oh. You can hear the motions a little more complex. And what's happening here is, first we were moving up and down a fifth and two voices moved, and then we moved up and down a third and one voice moved. And then we're moving up and down a second. We're moving up from E to up a second to F sharp minor, and all of the voices are moving in opposition. We're moving up a second, and all of the upper voices of the chord are moving down. Right? Like that. And, and, and vice versa. So I want to show you this again, again, in the key of C. This is from a book by Mick Goodrick, who is my teacher at New England Conservatory. Um, it's excerpted from that book, and it's called, let's see, where is this thing now? Okay, it's there. So it's called The Almanac of Voice Leading for the Year 2001 and Beyond. Sure. The reason why I think it's called Guitar Voice Leading is because um, there is no notation. It is all just note names. Um, and why I wanted to review this is because this is cycle five, which means that the bass notes are moving by fifth. Now key, here, what he's doing is he's going through all seven triads in C major. If I move to, let's see, where is that one? Aha, so this is called cycle seven. Goodrich called it cycle seven because you're moving down by step in the bass. So this is what I was saying. It's just, you're moving by, by, by step, and as you're moving down, C, B, A, all of the vo upper voices of the triad, they're all moving up every time. So in opposition to the bass, the bass goes down, the voices of the triad go up. If you want to try it the other way, challenge yourself and play this page backwards. Right? And you'll notice that it never repeats until you get through each chords, all, all three inversions of each chord, root, third, fifth, third, fifth, root fifth root third well, well, well. these are closed position triads up at the top of the page and spread triads meaning that the closed position triads are are within one octave and the spread triads are more than an octave there's a fifth between c and g and a sixth between g and e the movement is the same um again moving by step stepwise down everything is moving in the opposite direction when we move by third, this one is stepwise up, going from C to E minor, C up a third to E to G, one voice moves. So when you move by step, all three voices move. When you move by um, a third, one voice moves. And then finally, when you move by a fifth, two voices move. Like everything else, always in uh, the opposite direction of the bass. So I would just take little snippets of this, of any of these pages, and I'm going to drop you the file um, in the chat here in a second, too, so that you can look at these pages, is, oh, you know, okay, just take these, oh, look, this is right there, right? If you play this backwards, right, this is fifths ascending, but if you play it backwards, oh, there's your two, five, one right there, there's two, five, one in C, right? Just triads now, not seventh chords. But you can look at that movement and just take pieces of this, maybe in each inversion. So I guess maybe I'll show you that while I'm at it. So out there in YouTube land, if you take a screenshot of this right now, I'm going to take it away. And then, okay, so if I start on that D minor, right, and I'm going to say, oh, okay, the root of the chord is going to stay the same. And I'm going to go up and up. That would be triadic movement for that two, five, one. I would have you play lots and lots of ping pong cadence as I've, as you've gotten that, because you'll get your, you'll get your, um, your, your form of, mo of motion down. And then take any chord progression you like. 
any song and write the chords and look at how the bass is moving and decide, oh, is that moving by fifth? Is it moving by step or is it moving by third? And that can help you determine what direction the voices are gonna lead and then you'll look at it on the guitar. And I will just take a moment to advocate for getting some kind of piano keyboard, musical keyboard, like I have hidden away right there. Um, because, yeah, because it's, it's really, it falls under the fingers and you can see these things. Um, I don't have live or anything. Oh, I can turn on the speaker to this thing, I guess. But, um, you know, it's much easier to see the motion, you don't have to move, you know, on guitar, you have to move whole grips and move all over the instrument. Whereas, uh, let's see, let's turn this thing up. This is a very inexpensive keyboard, but it suffices. You don't need an expensive one. Oh, root third you fifth can, of the sequel. What's that? You could download plugins for everything you need. That's yeah, fine. exactly. I mean, I would fire up Ableton right now, but I'm not gonna do that right yeah. this second, just for time's sake, but, oh, look, down a fifth. back to see it's very easy to see on the keyboard and you can do it with one hand and you are actually able to keep the the, the voice that doesn't isn't moving you're actually to keep it with the same finger finger hello i can't play music and talk at the same time but you can see that as i'm moving down a fifth i'm just holding my first my thumb down and then as i move from c to g i'm holding down well, maybe I'll do it with that finger. I like that better, actually. So if I start with pianists are weird. One, three, five. You can actually feel kinesthetically the change a little bit better than you can mostly feel it on guitar. And that actually helps your understanding. And then you want to sing each part of that change, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to labor that today. Okay, I'm going to pause again because it's a long time to be on camera. Boy, this is like turning out to be a very long video. No, this is great. This is real, man. Just give me a full hour long. Let me analyze it. I'll be good. I know, but you know what the problem is? My YouTube views are going to look for crap because people are going to ditch out in the first two minutes. But, you know, hey, what can I do? Come and get the goods. What can I say? Okay. I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. You know, Axis Bold as Love, Jimmy. Yeah. yeah, I know John Mayer cut it, so I know you might know it, you know from that. But <laughs> I see, uh, I heard a live, a live version you did, but I also heard Jimmy Hendrix's version. Yeah, Mayer's version is really, really good. I mean, you know, yeah. like he's he's one of the better purveyors of the Hendrix style. I have to um, admit. Yeah. So, um, uh, this song, Axis Bold as Love, is based on a very um, foundational chord progression, which I'm going to do it in C first would be C, G, A minor, F. So many songs on this. As a matter of fact, if you look on YouTube, there's this comedy group or comedy musical group called Axis of Awesome. And they do this whole rip. It's, it's got to be their most popular video about this chord progression and how many different songs it's in. It's Let It Be by the Beatles in C. It's With or Without You by U2. It's Talk about, yeah. it's everything so hey what happens well we go from c to g oh hey c to g is up a fifth right and then we go from g to a minor oh that's from from g to a minor well that's the bass is moving up a step right and then we go from a minor to F and that's down a third, right? One thing that you can, if you're trying to remember the forms of the bass movement is that the bass is trying to move as much by step as possible as well. So all of the moves are going to be within one fifth. It's either gonna move by step back and forth or by third back and forth. And we don't do by fourth back and forth because that's a fifth. So it's either by step or by third or by fifth. So when I go from here from A minor to F, oh, I inverted the bass. Um, let's see, we're in C. C, G, A 
minor. I cheated. A minor F. And then back to C. Again, this is a little bit harder to see on the guitar because when you're trying to manipulate the bass along with it. C, G, A minor. Oh, I've got to go down. I've got to move my whole hand so kinesthetically it doesn't educate you quite as well as playing it on the keyboard does. And then F. Uh, the Hendrix version, I think, is in A. I can't remember if it's in A or D, but A, uh, E, F sharp minor. Okay, we're going, we're in E, we're going up by a step. F sharp minor, now we're going down a third, so we're gonna go up. myself e yes dun, dun. oh yeah we want to be here and it actually moves yes so that when you come back you actually end up in inversion lower. Right. So you might on that D chord play. A, E, F sharp minor, D, and then just invert on the and you get more melody in your chord changes. Voice leading. There you go. Okay, have fun with that. It's fun. <laughs>